Why do I miss two weeks of work or longer when I have a surgery in the OR? Well, that's a really good question. And there's an answer for it. It's that you end up um, having more healing. Um, when you're asleep in the OR, it enables a physician to use different techniques. Um, uh, you don't necessarily have to have a delicate touch or finesse. You can use a hammer and chisel. You can do what they call the rotor rooter with the micro debrider. You can resect quite a bit of bone and um, it just hurts more. So if you're gonna have a procedure done in the clinic, it requires a delicate touch. You're automatically gonna select out the, um, a different caliber physician. Um, you could be a fantastic physician and do surgeries asleep in the OR, but you could also be a knucklehead and get away with it. But in the clinic, there is no hiding behind general anesthesia. If you have a delicate touch, you can do it. If you don't, you would not even consider it. And there are many doctors who say, oh yeah, I do in-office procedures, no problem, and they talk you out of it every time. So if you wanna get an idea of how good your physician is, ask them how many in-office procedures have you done in the last week, in the last month. At the Modern Nose Clinic, we do between 50 and 60 in-office procedures every month. And to the best of our knowledge, we have the most robust uh, experience with doing in-office procedures. So you can feel confident that you'll get the most delicate touch and the most refined process possible. I hope that helps to know a little bit more about um, whether or not um, you want to be asleep in the OR or have a procedure awake in the clinic. Thank you. Another issue is that if you have packing and you have um, you know, more destructive processes done, then you'll need narcotics. And narcotics slow you down. Uh, they, um, they slow you down, they slow the recovery down. And so you might ask with your physician, will I need narcotics after my surgery? And that also will give you an idea of how delicate the procedure is. At the Modern Nose Clinic, I can't remember the last time I prescribed a narcotic. So um, I believe that part of the prolonged recovery has to do with how much uh, trauma you're subjected to. And a good way to find that out is asking, you know, will I need a narcotic for my recovery? Will that be beneficial? Will that be necessary? Could that be helpful? So those are some really good questions to ask also. Blood loss. If you have uh, more traumatic surgery and more blood vessels are cut, you'll bleed more. And as I mentioned with the anesthesia video, you'll bleed more just because anesthesia causes your blood vessels to dilate. So if you start off anemic following your procedure, then you're gonna be tired for the first two weeks just because of that. So you might decide to um, increase your intake of iron and other foods high in iron and rest up so you can, re you can reestablish that blood loss. Packing, nasal stents, things like that in your nose, You'll need that if you have a more traumatic surgery, more cutting using a scalpel, more stitching, so on and so forth. And while the packing is in, I basically feel like that's lost time to recovery. I sort of feel like the recovery doesn't start until the packing comes out. So if you know, if you ask your physician, do you ever use packing? Do you think it's possible I might need that? What should I expect in my nose when I wake up after the procedure? These are great questions to ask and I think they'll give you an idea of what to expect. Debridement, what is it? I'll do a video on that alone. Debridement means they're gonna cut your nose during the recovery to get the dead tissue out. So um, you might, it also reflects, I think, how much trauma is undertaken to your nose during your surgery. So you might ask your physician, is it likely I'll require debridement? And that will give you another idea of whether or not um, you're gonna expect a, um, a more prolonged recovery. Certainly you won't have it on Friday, return to work on Monday if they highly suspect you'll require debridement. You probably should anticipate two weeks off work and maybe up to four. Finally, just ask the, the physician, what do you expect my recovery to be like? And then you can make it even more specific. How possible is it that it will take between two and four weeks for me to get better? Because I need to know that for planning for my job and whatnot. Um, how, how likely is it that it'll be less than two weeks, 10 days, and so on and so forth. And again, and again, when we do procedures, we do them on Friday. You're back to school and work on Monday. Hope that was helpful.